Hello and welcome to non-content puzzle design number one. In this video, we're going to be going over the types of puzzles that are Loctite specific to either directional, shape, or color. Before we get going, I just wanted to give a reminder that the entire contents of the slideshow that I'm about to show you in this video is available over on Teachers Pay Teachers at my store, the Librarian Room of Requirement. See link below and in the video description. Welcome to step four, pick your puzzles in our non-content puzzle design. Before we get going into the different puzzle types, I just want to familiarize you with some of the things you're going to be seeing on my slides. These pictures over here to the right, the brain, the running boy, and the magnifying glass, each represent a certain type of puzzle. With some of the slides, you'll see a combination of these pictures. With some slides, you'll just see one picture. The brain represents mental puzzles, which are solved through knowledge or logic. The running boy represents kinetic puzzles, which are solved by completing some kind of physical task. Uh, the magnifying glass represents a scavenger puzzle, which are solved by searching for hidden objects. The little running boy and the magnifying glass puzzles are only going to work if you're designing a physical or kit breakout. The first group of puzzles I'm going to be showing you today are directional puzzles only. This is an example of a directional objects puzzle. Looking here at the top, you can see two brains, which means it's a mental puzzle and then it can work for either a kit breakout or a digital breakout. Uh, this puzzle works by putting a series of pictures with something in the image pointing or facing in a direction for a directional lock and you use a common order. In this particular case, I have five penguins and they're each looking in a direction, either up, down, left, or right, and I used a left to right order. This is a relative position puzzle, which is appropriate for kindergarten and up. As you can see from the brains here, it's a mental puzzle, so it'll work for a physical or a digital breakout. You find a set of objects that each have the ability to be halved. For each, you indicate a top half, a bottom half, a right half, or a left half, and you use a common order. Once again, this is only going to work for directional locks. In this particular picture, I have all of these pumpkins in a row, and each of their eyes has a part of them that's been highlighted using the little yellow color. So the yellow color is showing you what direction that you're going to be using. For example, for this first one, it's going to be up. For this one, it's left. For this one, it's down. For this one, it's up. And for this one, it's right. This is an example of a compass points type puzzle, which is appropriate for first grade and up. Again, it's a mental puzzle, so good for physical or digital breakouts. Uh, you find a theme-related object or objects that can be scattered around a central point like a compass. You make a list of the objects or clues leading you to the objects, and the correct answers are where they fall on the compass, and you use a common order. In this particular case, I have this as a 4-5 puzzle because uh, in addition to my object list over here, I added a lot of decoys, so it's a little trickier to find each of these items. Uh, and I also made sure that when I did these directions, they had to be in alphabetical order. So the students had to start with the flashlight and then the gloves and then the harness, the ice axe and the rope. So each of these directions is coming from the center where the kid is reaching for each of these objects. So he starts by reaching for the flashlight, which is going to be up. And then he has to reach for the gloves, which are over here to the right. Then he's going to be reaching for the harness, which is down, the ice axe, which is over here to the left, and then finally the rope, which is up. This is a map story path type of puzzle. It's appropriate for second graders and up. Uh, as you can see from the brains over here, it's a mental puzzle, so it'll work for the digital or physical breakouts. What you do with this type of puzzle is you chart a trip on a map, and the directions you travel are the combinations to the directional lock. So in this example, help Tinkerbell find Peter Pan, start at the Indian camp, and from there journey to Hangman's Tree. From there, travel to Cannibal Cove. Uh, next, go to Mermaid Lagoon. And if you can't find him there, try Skull Rock. So that'll give you your four directions. It's considered a second grade and up type puzzle because you need to have at least one student in your group who is a strong enough reader to not only read the story, but also find each of these places on the map. This is a clock hands type puzzle, which is appropriate for third grade and up. It's a mental puzzle, which means it'll work for digital or physical breakouts. 
With this puzzle, you're going to be using the hands or missing hands of the clock as directional lock combinations. In this particular picture, we have here morph deadline. If you stay in a morph for longer than two hours, uh, you're going to be stuck in that form forever. And that's supposed to be the clue to my players that they're going to need to add on two hours to these clock times. I kept my order very simple with uh, Cassie, Jake, Marco, and Rachel not only being uh, left to right, top to bottom, but also it's, they're in alphabetical order by first name, so there's no confusion on order because students tend to find this type of puzzle a little challenging, even if, uh, as this puzzle was designed for, they are fourth grade and fifth grade. So with this puzzle, we have Cassie became a horse at 10 a.m., adding two hours onto that. What I'm looking for is uh, the second hand to be pointing directly up at the 12. With this one, Jake transformed into a tiger at 4 p.m. Uh, his missing arrow is going to be pointing down to the 6. Marco turned into a gorilla at 7 p.m., which means his missing arrow is going to be pointing at the 9. And then Rachel changed into an elephant at 10 p.m., which means both of hers are going to be going straight up. If you wanted to make this type of puzzle a little bit more difficult, you could obviously mix up that order a little more. Or you could alternate between having missing minute hands and missing hour hands. Hour hands are obviously going to be easier. This next puzzle that I'm going to show you is a shape puzzle only, and there's only one of that kind. So this is the shaped objects puzzle, which is appropriate for kindergarten and up. It is a mental puzzle, so it'll work for both digital and physical breakouts. You use pictures of shaped objects or a single picture with shaped parts in a common order for shape lock. So here we have five different objects. I have my square object, uh, my two circle objects, my star object, and my triangle object. And I have underlined S, I, uh, Z, E, telling the students they're going to need to use size for the order, although they do have to figure out if that's going to be small to large or large to small. Our final group is going to be color puzzles only. This is the colored objects puzzle appropriate for kindergarten and up. It's a mental puzzle, so it'll work both for physical and digital breakouts. Use solid color pictures or a single picture with solid colored parts in a common order for a color lock. So both of these different puzzles use a version of the number order. And as you can see, this one over here is one object with different color parts. And I've given the order by writing one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, over here, they are separate objects. And I've given the order by putting the certain number of polka dots on each of them. So you would start with the purple, go to the blue, go to the green, go to the yellow, and then go to the red. This is a frame matching puzzle, which is appropriate for kindergarten and up. It is a mental puzzle, so it'll work both for digital and physical breakouts. You surround pictures with solid color frames. You put something in the puzzles to indicate a common order. Once they're in order, the frame color is the combination. So in our example over here, we put the frames around different clocks, and the common order is here at the bottom with left to right the times. So you have to match the times with the clocks. You will notice in this particular puzzle, they use decoys to make it a little more challenging. So this example here is not really a kindergarten level example. It's more appropriate for third grade, fourth grade, because again, we're using clocks. That's a skill they don't have until third grade and fourth grade. And of course, they're using decoys. This is a color mixture puzzle, which is appropriate for fourth grade and up. It is a mental puzzle, so it's going to work for both uh, physical and digital breakouts. You use pictures of primary colored things that need to be combined in order to get a color lock. So over here, we have these paint buckets. So the things that are going to be combined is the paint in the buckets and the paint that's on the paint brushes. And the order here is going from left to right. So here we've got a red sitting on top of a red bucket. So if they mix together, you're still going to get red. However, over here, we've got a blue paintbrush and we've got red in the paint bucket. So we're going to get purple as our next color. Here we've got a yellow paintbrush and a red paint bucket. So we're going to get orange with this one. Two blues is going to just stay blue. But of course, the yellow and the blue is going to give you green. This example over here is from a video type of a puzzle. Uh, and they are shooting different color sparks coming out of the wands. And they mix with the colors in the fire. 
and they do it uh, a certain number of times, giving you the correct combinations. You have to watch the video to get that order. That concludes our first round of puzzle type videos. Thanks for watching.